Here are three reasons why to subscribe to Fringe Financials on YouTube. Number one, it is free, which is the best price that you can pay for this kind of content. Two, I am completely transparent with all of my investments. And number three, I have a variety of educational videos every single week. Now let's get on with the video. What's up YouTube and welcome back to another Fridge Financials video. And in the last video that I posted, I went over what my basic options trading strategy. And in today's video, we're gonna be going a little bit more in depth with a little bit more of an advanced strategy. But the purpose of the strategy here is that you can only start trading options here with literally $100, which is absolutely insane. Because again, usually it's like, oh, I need a lot more cash and everything else. But you can do this trading strategy here with very few dollars. You can do $100, $200, $300. So you can start off you know, small and kind of build your way up on your trading account and see how things go. If you're excited for today's video, make sure that you smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, of course, like I always ask, and turn the bell notifications for all future uploads. Now, in this video here, what I'm going to go over is how you can start trading options with $100 minimum, you know, maybe a couple hundred dollars more. You can start off small and kind of build your way up from there. And again, it still can give you some decent returns. So this is what I want to do in the last video, right? If you watched the last video, if you didn't, then I don't tell you, like you should be watching it because my content is awesome as a biased person, of course. But in the last video I had, you know, I was talking about selling cash secure puts. Again, essentially what it is, is that you're betting for a company like Xpeng to not go below a certain strike. If it goes below that certain strike, you are at, you are going to be forced. They don't ask you, they tell you, you are going to be forced to buy a hundred shares of that company at a certain price. Now, again, you need that cash buying power available in order to do it. But let's say, Fridge, I don't have $1,000. I don't have, you know, $2,000, $3,000 lying on my account. I just put in like 500 bucks. That's all I got. So let me show you what we're able to do and how we are able to essentially do the same idea, but with a little bit less of a risk that goes into options trading. Because again, the risk for this one is the stock price goes to zero and I lose all the cash. Not a good thing, obviously. So let's do a different stock today because, again, not everybody knows X paying you what it is. So let's talk about Uber because everybody Ubers. You know, you're Ubering food, Uber Eats, you know, you're Ubering rides, whatever it is, right? So right now I'm looking at Uber. Again, I always map it out. Like I said in the last video, I do support and resistance, right? So again, as you can see here, it rises up, it breaks back down. So I'm thinking that since it bounces off of this, there's a lot of buying power possibly, again, these are not guaranteed to happen every time. It's just what I think and what I notice. And, you know, is it guaranteed to happen? Absolutely not. You know, again, not a financial advisor, not financial advice. Um, this is just what I'm noticing. I'm tracking previous charts and everything else. So I'm thinking that, you know what? There's a lot of support over here, like the $60 range right here. You know, again, it could be a little bit lower than 60. It could be a little bit above $60, but it's around $60. I'm looking at for a possible support, which uh, you can get a nice bounce from Uber technology. Now, as you will see here, let's pull up Uber because, you know, you got to start doing this here. So let's say that I'm going to be betting that Uber, I'd again, this is just, this is not like an actual number. I just made it up for the point of the video here. Let's say that Uber won't trade below $58. So I'm betting that Uber won't go below this line right here. You know, just like the last video when I said, hey, I'm going to sell an option and hope that Uber doesn't go below a certain strike price, right? I'm going to sell an option and hope that Uber does not go below $58. Now, Again, what does that mean? Well, let's pull up the options here. So we trade Uber options. Again, going to sell because again, selling is what puts you in the, you know, the casino puts you in the house and not against the house, which is what we always would like. I'm gonna bet a put against it. Again, put means that it's not gonna go below a certain strike. So in my case, I'm gonna do $58, which is right here. As you can see also, the chance of profit is 90%. Again, putting yourself in the house, give yourself that probability of making some money. Is it amazing money? Absolutely not. But you know, I'd rather take a lot more winners and bank up and bank that money slowly than take a lot of losers and get hit one good one that might still leave you lose money overall. Let's say I'm gonna bet that Uber won't go below. Okay, I'll do January 19th. Uber won't go go below $58 by January 19th. So here's my position right here. Now, as we've said before, with what Uber does is again, I'm putting $77 on this trade here with just this. But here's the problem with my portfolio right now. Since I don't have the cash to buy this, again, because the collateral behind it, I'll tell you right here, if you order, right? The collateral that I would have to put aside is $5,800. As you can tell, Robert, it's like, mm -mm, you can't do that. You're not allowed. You don't have enough. Why not? Well, I only have 2,500 available to buy and I need double that. 
So what do I do here? Well, so here's the less risky approach to, again, still make bank for your buck, but at a little bit of a less riskier option here. So what you are able to do is that since you're selling this put option right here and you don't have the buying power to do it, instead of putting in more money, which you, if you don't have that cash, obviously you can't even do that. Don't take out like another mortgage or don't take out a loan to do this because it's stupid, right? What you can do instead is you can buy a put contract instead. What this does is again, you're buying a hundred shares. Instead of selling a contract worth a hundred shares, you're buying a contract that gives you the buy or the accessibility to 100 shares. And what I'm gonna do is watch what I can do here. I am going to buy a put that's gonna be $1 down here. So $1 right here, okay? So I'm gonna bet that it won't go below this, but my collateral, since I don't have enough, enough cash collateral, is I wanna now buy a put option, which allows me to have the collateral in case this doesn't work out, which I'm gonna do right here. Now, as you will see, what happens is it opens up what is called a put credit spread, okay? Again, it's a put credit spread because it's a put, it's a credit because I'm getting given a credit amount. Now, as you will see what happens here, is that since I'm buying this contract here, I'm paying $57 to have own 100 shares, right? But then I'm selling a contract for $77. And again, I need that collateral as a result. So what you are end up paying is the difference in the strike prices, which in this case is $20, minus the fees, of course, right? Now, as you will see here, you only have to pay the difference in the strike price times 100. So since the strike price differential is $1 from here to here, $1 times 100 shares means that my cash that I need to open it is $100 for collateral. Look at that. There it is. Wow. That's awesome, right? Like, why would you not do that, right? I mean, obviously, again, this is risky, so I'm not going to tell you to do this, obviously. But in case you're wondering how I'm trading my strategies here, if you want to start off trading and selling options, but you don't have enough cash to buy positions if you are assigned, credit spreads isn't a bad way to start off as well. Now, again, these are not guaranteed profitability here. But again, what it does, as you can see, the risk to reward here. So my max loss is $80. And the reason why it's $80 is because if it hits below 58 and it closes below 58 here, I have to, I lose the hundred dollars I pay here, but I kept 20 bucks of it. So the difference means I'm only down 80 bucks. So I'm only down to $80 in this case here. But the nice thing about being down $80 is again, it's only 80 bucks. You know, if you're a comfortable, if you're okay with losing $80 on a trade instead of, you know, 8,000, 5,000, 2,000, whatever it possibly be, right? It, it limits your risk. It also limits your reward because again, if I didn't have this, I can keep $77. So it does limit your reward, but it also limits the risk. And if you're just starting off by trading options here, this is limiting your risk because it allows you to essentially start to learn how to trade options, but to only risk, you know, what you can afford to lose. You can go even cheaper if you want to and go even 50 cents difference. A 50 cent difference is gonna only cost you a total of $50. So you can trade options for $50 if you want to do that to get started with it. And as we'll see here, you're making $10 or a bit, almost $11 on 50 bucks, which is a little over 20%. So this trade right here gives you a possibility of making 20%, but with not as much collateral as just selling an option like we do here. Again, this collateral is ridiculous. This one is not. Ridiculous collateral, not ridiculous. It limits your risk, it limits your reward, but it allows you to get into the market and start trading options if you'd like to. So it's all about though, again, your technical analysis. It's about your research. Do you think it's gonna go below this? So you could drop it even lower if you want to. So you know what? I think 56 might be a good one to look at. So maybe I'll do a 56 one. Let me close this out here. Say I wanna sell a 56, which is down here. I sell a 56. Oh wait, I still don't have the collateral of $5,600. Again, 100 shares, $56 a share. I don't have $600. So I don't have that cash, which again, I do not. So what I can do is I can buy a contract underneath, whether it's $1, I can go $2 if I want to. This is a $200 collateral. It's a difference of $2 here. And again, it gives me $19 as a result, which allows me to see, you know, to be able to open up position and go from there. And again, as you'll see, when you do this on Robinhood, it tells you, hey, 
you are opening a put credit spread, right? It's spread out between these two strike prices here. Again, you keep the difference every time, right? Again, you want the credit spread because that means you're getting this cash up front. And now you just got to hope that Uber eats or Uber does not go below 56, you know, and you trade the option and you see what happens and you go from there, right? And again, you can hit a review order if you want to. And you can see, again, the risk to reward. The difference between selling options versus buying options is that buying options, you're risking not as much and your reward is a lot higher, but it's a lot more risk and a lot more, you know, chances of it going sideways or going bad. This one, you're not making as much. Your reward to risk ratio is obviously a little bit off. It's a, it's a lot more, it's a lot, not worse, but it's a lot different because you're only making $19 and you're risking 181. But again, the point is, is that it's putting you in a good chance of making this $19 here. So if I wanted to go to my, you know, options calculator here and go to credit spread, right? And say I put in ticker Uber. So again, what my position is here is that I am buying a put option at $54 for January 19th. So I'm going to go to buy January 19th and I'm buying it for $54, which is right here. Again, I'm also going to sell. And then on the other side, I am selling the 56. Basically, again, I'm betting that Uber won't go below $56. So I'm going to sell a put option that expires on the 19th at 56. So I'm going to go to sell put option 56 right here. As you can see, my net credit is 20 cents per share. It's not 20 cents total. You're getting 20 cents per share times hundred gives you that $20 that were, that is covered on Robinhood. And as you will see, as you look at this calculation here, right? $20 as a net credit. Again, mass risk is 180. Say, you know, obviously this can expire and in, in the money, and then you're left with, you know, losing 200 bucks, but you keep 20. So the max loss is actually 180. But look at your maximum return. If you let it ride out, you make 11% return in a month. So you make the whole S&P 500 return in one month. If you did it over and over again, you might get 100% return in the year, which again, I don't think it's really, you know, viable. But I look for the trades that put me in the market in the idea to beat the market. That's what I'm doing here. But look at the profit here. Probability of profit is 87%. It's not a profit. It's not a, it's not something I'm buying or selling that gives me like 2% chance. It's something that I'm putting myself in the house seat and I'm making some money on it. And again, as you can see, as the stock trades on more and more, the closer and closer we get to that expiration, the more and more I get to keep as a premium value here. As long as it doesn't dip super below 9%, I'm keeping 20 bucks and calling it a day. And then I keep the 20 bucks. I've now gone from 200 to 220. I've upped my portfolio 11%. And then I can now do it again and then do it again and then do it again. Okay. Your max loss is 180. And what I tell people every time you do this, do not let it go to your max loss. Okay. That is where the market is going to beat you. Set yourself with a tight stop loss. Set yourself with a, if it hits, if I lose 46 bucks, I'm cashing it off. I'm taking my 20, my $46 loss. I'm moving, you know, find out what you're okay with losing. If you're not okay with losing 180, then don't let it go to 180. Watch what it does. If Uber tanks, you know, see what it's doing. See if there's news behind it. See if it's just the market selling off, you know, but be careful with it. The other half of selling options is you have to manage it. You have to see what it's doing. You got to make sure you're comfortable with what it's doing. And if you still like you start to get a little bit uneasy, you cash out and you call it a day. You know, there's always going to be another trade. There's always going to be another position. But again, it puts you in the house seat of the casino to make money. I'll give you an example here. This is an Amazon one that I was showing on my live stream. Again, I do live stream as well on YouTube. So make sure to turn on the bell notifications for that reason. This is an Amazon one that I was willing to bet that it would go to 160, for example. You have to pay $660. But if you calculate this, look at your probability of profit, 22%. What I just showed you was four times that much. You know, obviously the maximum return is infinite, but um, I mean, but it's 20, of course it is, because you have a 22% chance of this working. That's why I sell options. So again, if you want to see what I'm doing, I got to pull another stock here, just to kind of show you a quick rundown about what I'm looking at. Um, let's see if I can find another one here for you guys that might be hitting, you know, a little bit of a low point. Um, I think DraftKings is one of them I kind of want to do. So DraftKings is an open position I have right now on my account, um, as you will see. You go back to my Robin here. My DraftKings one is open right now. Um, but let's say I want to do DraftKings one and now I don't have the cash for it. So say I want to do DraftKings. Here's DraftKings. Again, I'm going to bet. I'm still feeling confident that it won't go below $33, right? So I'm going to go to DraftKings. I'm going to go to trade DraftKings options. And again, 
first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna open up the selling side first. I'm gonna sell a contract that it won't expire below $33, which is right here. Boom. This right now gives me $65 in premium, okay, up front. Here's the issue. Again, I do not have the buying power. I need 3,300, I only have 2,500. So what does that mean I'm gonna do? Well, I'm gonna give myself more collateral by buying a contract of a strike price that's a little bit below. And what it does, I have to go to edit for this one first, but what it does is it allows me to have that collateral. Again, I'm paying $100 now because the difference in strike price is $1 times the 100 shares would be $100. And I'm keeping the difference of the strikes here, which in this case would be $23 minus the fees. So it'll be $22.94. Again, you hit review, my collateral is 100 bucks. I just shorted my collateral from $3,300 to $100. And again, if you go to the calculation here, as you can see, I'm making $23. Max loss is $77. So I'm making, again, a 23% return if this doesn't work. That's what I was basically doing. Again, if it goes to this price here, then I start to lose money. And if it hits $32, then I am going to be at a complete loss and I'm losing all my money. And then that's it. You know, so I'm at 100 bucks and 100 bucks, but my upside is 23% return. Again, you can do this calculator here. It's called um, this optionsprofitcalculator.com. Great name for a website. But again, you can do a credit spread and say you want to do DraftKings, right? DraftKings. Again, I am buying the put option that expires the 12th for $32 or for, um, yeah, $32 for strike price. So I'm going to go to January 12th. I'm going to a call at $32. Oh, no, sorry, a put at $32. And I'm going to sell a contract that's at 33, basically again, betting that it will not go below $32. And again, here's my net credit. Hit calculate and look at that. Even though it's not an amazing number, I have a 74% chance of collecting 30% of my portfolio. You can 3X the market return on average if you were able to do this trade successfully. Again, it's all about risk management and everything else. And again, as time goes on, the stock starts to decay. I get more money and we go on from there. You know, you can go less risky if you want to. You can obviously do, again, less risk means less reward, which again is what I would say to start off with because it definitely helps. Um, let me get rid of this. So again, you can go like super, super down here. You can go to like $30 and then buy a 29 one for collateral. And again, you get six bucks on 94. But then it's a 6% return. And I can promise you that if I'm looking at 30 and 29, so we'll do 29 and 30 five dollars here 93 percent chance to make five percent in a month which is basically half s p 500 in the year in one month you know 93 percent chance we wouldn't take those odds so that's essentially what i'm doing i know in the last video i showed my roku trade essentially which again the roku one basically is showing that as you will see um just like you have um put credit spreads which are basically betting for it to go lower you could also do a call credit spread, which basically means you can't go above. So you could do the opposite and say, I don't think it's going to go above this marker right here. And you can do the exact same thing. So for Roku, for example, I had a Roku one. As you can see, I did a put credit spread. I made $34. So they paid me $34 up front. Again, I closed it the next day because it sold off of the market and I bought it back for $16. So I get paid $34 up front. I buy it back for $16. I just made $18 to close the position out. I made $18 on 200, which is a 9% return in one day. So that is, an, again, a little bit more of an advanced trading style that I'm currently running. If you have any questions you made this far in the video, make sure that you leave the comments down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions, of course, please feel free to reach out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, make sure you smash thumbs up button so I can do more content like this. I hope you guys are making money in the market, and I will see you guys in the next video.